We had Sauce Gardner. You're about to, to watch the interview. Great I'd, kid. Yeah. I mean, he's not a kid. He's a grown man. He's a dog. Okay, that's what he that's that's what he says. And he plays like it. We loved having Sauce on, pulling for the Jets this year. Love that defense. Uh, my question to y'all would be, in all your years in the AFC East, uh, you know, as fans, who's the player you hated the most on either Miami, Buffalo, or New England? Or New York. Well, uh. listen, I almost feel like we should take everybody but New England out of it. Which <laughs> Patriot did you hate the most? <laughs> From There's all, so all many you, to choose from. Yeah, now it's like a lot of fun to root against the Patriots, I'm sure. But uh, but yeah, so yeah, leave it in the comments. If you like the interview, like, subscribe, tell a friend. We loved having Sauce Gardner on. Just one of the smartest young players in the game. He's going to be doing this a long time. Uh, and I hope he comes back again. Hope you come back again and check out some of our other uh, interviews and podcasts. <laughs>
I would see him on social media. And I just remember he had hit me back. You know, that was love. You know, Jason, you know, he's extremely humble as well. I feel like both of them humble, but Trav, he, you know, he obviously, you know, who he's with. And he just, he got that natural swag and everything like that. He got that. swag, dude. And Jason, Jason got, got his swag, own swag, but it's a it's a different type of swag. You know what I mean? <laughs> he he more he more chill. He more yeah. chill. But I yeah. remember I remember when I had went on like I went on a, a, a thirty day visit with with the Eagles or whatever. And I seen him in a in a, in a weight room lifting and just seeing him get after it. And he seen me, you know. Actually, I met I met Jason first. I met Jason yeah. at that thirty at that, at that thirty visit. So yeah. Yeah, I met him first. He seen me. He seen me. And he was like, man. You're a long corner. He was just telling me things like that, man. Uh, He's yeah. looking up at you. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> he might be six feet. Hey, you're six three. <laughs> How would your game be different if you were five like, ten? You, you, yeah. What do you have to change? How do you use your height to your advantage, and is it not always an advantage? Um, I don't know. Actually, that's a. I never got asked that question. You know, me being so tall, I pride myself on. Being able to move like the shorter guys, you know, that's why that's one thing about my game that I feel like is different from a lot of a lot of other six three or taller corners. Yeah. You know, my ability to be able to like move and change directions, stuff like that. So it might be the same. It depends yeah. if I if I still have my arm length, do I have my arm length or no? Yeah. We'll give you your arm yeah, length. You can okay. give your arm length. Yeah, so it, it'll be the exact same. You'd almost same. rather be tiny with long yeah. arms, dude. Right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, nah, you know? I, I I come across a lot of uh, shorter cornerbacks, even like DJ Reed. He's shorter than me, but he have long arms. He he always be like, bro, I'm supposed to be at least six foot. Like <laughs> <laughs> they all, bro. I didn't heard that so many times from different different shorter cornerbacks. It's it's crazy. I'm supposed to be six feet. <laughs> You're supposed to be six four. You're yeah, not six four. Let's not. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. um, do you think? Uh, do you think Reed doesn't get enough credit? I, I feel like, you know, obviously you deserve a ton of credit, right? You know, like you've, you've set the league on fire your first couple of years, but I always tell people there's two really good corners up there in New York. Yeah, man. You know, me being able to see it like firsthand and watch him day in and day out, just being able to see the type of leader he is, like Coach Arbrick, our defensive coordinator, he always talk about him, and I'm like, it's not just me or the cornerback coaches or the cornerbacks or the or my cornerback coach Tony Oden who sees it. Like everybody see it, man. He works so hard, like on in off the field, and like his craft. He he try to get better every single day. So <clears throat> I I literally watch him every single day. Like everything that he do, the way his rehab, the way he take care of his body, the way that he prepare for practice. Not just waiting for practice, but actually preparing for practice. You know, it's a, it's a difference. So. To a certain extent, I do feel like he don't get enough credit, but I feel like the ones who actually know ball, like, know, like, he's that dog. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? He's he, yeah. he really a dog. Yeah, he absolutely is. What do you, like, as a former defensive end, there used to be games I'd come out of and say, you know, fans will say, hey, you played like trash. I didn't see you back there or whatever. And I'm like, man, I was winning my rushes. You know, the coverage wasn't there. Um, there was a lot I wish fans knew about the game, right? when they evaluate me in my position, what do you wish fans knew about cornerback play? Like, what are the times where you're like, man, if you only knew what was happening here, a lot of times you guys get beaten. It might not be you at all. I mean, at the end of the day, it happens. Like in general, like sometimes you're going to get beat. Sometimes it's going to be you that don't do your job right. Sometimes your teammate might not do their job right. And it's up to y'all to keep that in house, obviously. But, you know, it's, it's 2024. The coverage has evolved to a certain extent. To a certain extent, um, cover three, not just cover three that you see on Madden. You know what I'm saying? Corners are not just turning and bailing and running hella far. You know, everything is kind of different. So if a fan see a receiver that's kind of open and it look like he's in your area or something like that, they, oh, man, you need to get better. Oh, you, you know, it's a lot of that that goes on. And not just, like, for me or for the Jets. It's a lot of that that goes on around the league. Like, I done seen Darius Slay on Twitter saying stuff to fans like, man, y'all really don't know nothing that's going on. And I'm not going to say they don't know nothing that's going on, but, you know, sometimes it's they don't know what's going on. And I don't blame them because that's what fans do. You know, they watch football and, you know, they wake up and watch football. That's that's just what they do and watch sports in general. So sometimes they're not always going to get it right. But 
That's one. Yeah, they might they might not know you were supposed to have help over the top or something like that. And it's hard. I always like DBs. They'd say, "Hey, don't give the other guy the palms up, man. Don't show up your guy, right?" Which I think like a lot of DBs do a really good job of that. We just go back to the huddle and we handle it, right? You know. Yeah. But it's the same thing with being out of your gap up front and that sort of thing. You don't want to turn to your buddy and be like, you know, keep it in house. And and last year was tough, I know, because. You guys are a really great defense. As far as EPA is concerned, up near the top of the league, um, I thought the defensive line was great. The coverage is great. Backers are fun to watch, man. Yeah. But I've been on defenses like this where – and this isn't taking anything away from the situation you guys were in, but it's like sudden change, sudden change. You know, start with the ball at the 30-yard line. Like you're in plus right. territory. You're playing defense all of a sudden. Um, does that get demoralizing? Was it hard for you guys? And how did you rally around – each other as the season went on because it wasn't what you expected it to be. When it came to the outcome of the game, if it's one of those games like where we lost and we felt like things could be different, you know, um, then obviously it will be demoralizing or whatever. But when you in the heat of the moment, it's like you want to go out there and be able to show the world why you're the best. You know, we want to be able to go out there and show the world why, why we're the best defense in the NFL. You know, and that's just that's just how we used to think about it. But when the outcome used to be us losing, then we obviously we'll get to talking about other things. But you know, like I always want to be able to go out there on the field and compete. Yeah, with, with a game like you know, you had your Dallas games where I'm like, man, you guys are good enough to beat these guys on that side of the ball, and it just snowballs because you know everything goes wrong. And then you got your Houston game where it's yeah. raining and you guys are getting after their ass. You know, they're down a couple of receivers. And I'm thinking, like, having been a part of groups like that, are those the games that keep you going? Even though nobody's like that – fans watching, they're like, that game doesn't matter as much. These guys might be out of it. But for you guys, you walk out of a, a game like that, do you take pride and when the chips are down, coming to work? Yeah, most definitely. I feel like that's what Coach Sala, Coach Aubrey, uh, our position coach do a great job at, you know, no matter what the circumstances are, you know, we out there on the field, you know, we got to act like it's a championship every single game. And um, I was just watching DJ show me what Tom Brady had said about um, how he treated every practice, every preseason game like it's a championship. So, like, when he got to the Super Bowl, it was like a normal game for him. Yeah. And that's how we treat it as a defense, you know. Whenever we out there, you know, the younger guys come in, you know, we set the standard for the younger guys. So they going to watch what we do day in and day out. So when they get out there, they're going to they gonna ball. So, yeah. Who's the guy on your defense you got to calm down a little bit? You seem pretty calm. Like, I might be wrong. Maybe you got a different persona on the field. But who's the guy that you got to be like, yo, chill, dude? Like, like, um, like we got to we gotta play this game, dude. <laughs> oh, man. That's a great question, man. It's probably Michael Clemens. <laughs> My. Michael, big ass Michael, dude too. Michael Clemens, he he get in a different zone, man. I'll be having to be like, you gotta understand, I'm 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 much more smaller than him, so I gotta be like he gonna actually listen to me. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? <laughs> Which is so crazy. I gotta, I gotta be like, come on, man. Like just like the little Mike, like the movies where you got um The Rock and Kevin Hart. Yeah. Things like that. So Brandon I'm more like Stimpy. Kevin. I'm yeah, I'm more like Kevin Hart. So I gotta I feel like that's why he hear me. You know, I gotta be Come on, Mike. Just just relax. Calm uh, down, man. I know what you mean. Hey, it's, I had a couple of those guys. <laughs> it's end of May, beginning of June, so we got to talk about stupid stuff. If we put you at receiver, your quarterback's Aaron Rodgers, 17-game season, how many catches, oh, how goodness. many yards, how many TDs for you next season? Oh, man. I don't know how many catches. I know I'm going to find a way to get it at least 1,200 yards. Well, wow. at least at least at least a thousand yards easily. Yeah, hopefully, um, a thousand. Yeah. About about eight TDs. You got to no matter of fact, at least twelve hundred. I got Aaron. I got Aaron. <laughs> See, look, Aaron, he make the good ones look great. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So yeah. me, I'm gonna come in at receiver. I'm gonna be good, but he gonna he gonna take me to a whole different level. What's it like practicing against Aaron? Or are there just moments where you're like, what? I don't expect that ball to be there man, on Sunday. Man, it's it's really frustrating sometimes, you know, because he don't really give you too many opportunities to intercept him. Yeah. So it's like if he do and you miss that op, yeah. you're going to be so frustrated because you never know when you're going to get the op again. Like he might give you an op the first week of OTAs, 
and then you don't get the next op to OTA number six, OTA number seven. So going to say July, maybe. Yeah, for real. It could it could even be July, but it's like he to the point is like man, he's been playing this game for a very long time. He didn't seen every look, so he's so he's so confident in, in himself, and that's one one thing that I get from him that I try to apply to me. Because age, age doesn't matter. You know, confidence, you don't have to be in a league for 10 plus years to be confident. You should always be confident in your ability as long as you are prepared the right way day in and day out. So, man, just being able to watch him and see the throws that he make, no look throws. Like, I remember yeah. last year he threw um, he threw one of the tight ends uh, a back shoulder, a back shoulder on like a plaster. So he scrambled out. And he looked the other way and threw a back shoulder on the sideline. I couldn't believe it. My break was so clean. Like, it was going to be a pick. <laughs> it was going to be a pick. He literally threw it where I couldn't even get it. And, I got, and I'm a guy with long arms. So, yeah. man. Yeah, he's something, man. He's still that, – that, that arm still works. Uh, what, uh, what are some other guys – like, who are some other guys that, that you say they do a really good job with their eyes? You know, like, we know as fans and as – Players, hey, but if I'm not in a backpedal, I don't know how you guys are getting manipulated by some of these really experienced guys. Who are the guys that do the best job from the snap of the ball to the release of the football in manipulating a defense? So I haven't seen a guy as good as Aaron when it comes to, like, manipulating the defense, but there are guys who do manipulate defenses. I would say Patrick Mahomes, um, Josh Allen, have you played Burrow yet? Yeah, Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow for sure. For I feel sure, like he does sure. a great job in the he pocket does, he, with his yeah, eyes. Most definitely. I would say them three. Them three yeah. for sure. Them What's the attitude sure. when you play Josh? Because it's like, hey, the rushers, we're stressed out all week. I know you hear the D-line coach in there like rush lanes and the whole thing. But if he breaks the pocket and he's bearing down on you guys in the second level, like you're a big dude. But what's it like getting him on the ground and the challenges that he poses? Um, I mean, it's tough. You know, it's not many quarterbacks built like him. I, don't, I think he's probably the biggest one in the league that can move like that. Yeah. You know, so it's definitely tough because nine times out of ten, by the time it's time to tackle him, you already done chased your man around the field for about five to six seconds because he, he's literally going to be running, running away from the D-line the whole time and the receiver's trying to get open. So you go from chasing the receiver to, all right, now it's time to make this tackle. You know, so, yeah, it's, it's definitely a tough task. Do you think scramble drills, like, when you think scramble drill, is that the first team you're thinking about? Most definitely. Most yeah. definitely. The the chemistry that him and Stefan Diggs got had, it was, yeah. it was crazy. You know, because yeah. Stefan already a, a guy that can get open without the plaster because he's, he's an elite receiver. Yeah. But just combining that with Josh, it was, it was crazy. What's it like playing Miami? I talk about Miami a lot. I mean, how quick they get the ball out and that sort of thing in the run game and, and the speed they have outside. I just playing Miami, the timing that they play with can when they're rolling, because when when you got yeah. them, you got them. But when they're rolling, it can be hard. And you see how they score 70 on like Denver. But yeah. what's the what's the the challenge there when it comes to, hey, we got to take care of the flat. We got to take care of these quick options. But also we're afraid of getting beat over top. Man, playing Miami, you got to understand, you got Tyreek, but Jalen Jalen Waddle, who is like Tyreek Jr., like not, not Jr., but Tyreek Hill 2.0, you know what I'm saying? So it's like you can't be like, oh, let's take Tyreek out the game and just have to focus on Jalen because Jalen a dog too. So it's just like, hey, you just got to trust in your game. You got to tr trust in your, uh, your preparation. Because you know when you play in Miami, they're not just going to line up and just run routes. You know, they have the ability to do that, but that's just not what they do. It's going to be a lot of moving pieces before the ball even snap. Then when the ball snap, you're just going to see thing left, right, vertical. It's just going to be a lot going on. Yeah. The majority of us old heads appreciate this clean, new, throwback, uni look. What are your thoughts on it? Especially, I think, the white face mask really um, makes it pop. I think it looks good. Yeah. But you haven't seen all of the bad iterations of the Jets unis since we had these. Yeah. Well, for starters, I mean, I'm only going on year three, so I think they're probably ten times better than the ones we had last year. 
Yep. And I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you why for the most part before I even get too much into detail. The number one last year, the way it looked on the jersey was just like a a stick of butter. <laughs> 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 it was like a stick of butter, but like now you can actually see the actual number one. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. I still I still I mean my practice jersey still like the stick of butter one, so I just it remind me of last year a little bit. <laughs> It's just a letter I, I. It looks like yeah, a piece of tape. Exactly. Like, <laughs> looks a, piece like of, a piece of athletic I wish we tape. Could, I wish we could change it, but yeah. I don't want to try to be bigger than the program. Right. So I'm going to just keep it exactly how it is. But, yeah. man, just yeah. the way the, the pattern, the pattern, the two stripes on, on each shoulder, yeah. you know, everything just looks nice, nice about it. The helmets, of course, the, the new logo is fire. The white face mask. It's, I love everything about the new one. Yeah, the new you, it's a good-looking getup. Yeah. Uh, with Zach Wilson, man, he got a lot of criticism. I mean, I criticized the hell out of him after what I thought he threw the defense on the bus. But I'm also a football player. I understand people say things that they yeah. maybe didn't mean. And you guys rallied around him and Garrett rallied around him. And people make a lot of noise. But I guess my question would be, I think Zach's an NFL quarterback. Now, could he reach his potential? I think that's up to the system he's in and how he develops. Yeah. What do you think about his second chapter? Are you pulling for him? Do you? Do you kind of do you think that he's got some tools and and what would he need to to change to get better? Um, I feel like when it comes to talent, um, as players and coaches, if you see somebody do some this, let me just speak for me. If I see somebody do something one time, then I know it's in them. I know they can do it, right? So I didn't practice against them for two straight years. And I didn't even see him do like some special things in games. So it's like, I know he can do it. So it's just going to take something to get it out of him. So this way, this can become who he is, like game in, game out, every day of practice. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like a new chapter, like obviously I'm not familiar with Denver and how they run yeah. things and who their coaches is, but a new chapter I feel like was, was good for him and yeah. is good for him. And I feel like, uh, he have all the tools that it, that it takes to be a top tier NFL quarterback. Yeah, I mean he's, he makes some wild plays, and like you, I'm like I sound like a coach too, but I'm like if I see you do it once, man, yeah, like let me see it again, you know. So I'm, hopefully we see some more of it. Uh, your coach Jeff Ulbrich, who you already mentioned, who I'm a big fan of this guy, man. I feel like he he's a great coach, and hearing you guys talk about him, I think he's a head coach one day. Do you think Do you think he's got that in him? Oh, most definitely. You know yeah. his attitude. Every day that he just attacks, attacks work, you know, when it comes to how he carries himself off the field, on the field, you know, how he talks to the defense, you know, he's he's a true leader. You know what I'm saying? He embodies everything, everything that we need, you know, um, to keep going every day. And obviously he knows ball. That's the that's I feel like that's the easy thing, you know, when it comes to a guy that played in the league and someone who now coaches and is, is a coordinator, he knows ball, whether it's offense, defense, like he knows everything about about ball. So I have no doubt that uh, in his future, he's going to be a, a head coach. And also, I, I heard this. I don't know if it's true. I really liked him on Hard Knocks. But he um, he wouldn't call you sauce until you made that that big yeah. play or had that great game early in the season, uh, I guess your rookie year. But um, can I talk to you about seasoning? Yeah. <laughs> Nobody ever asked you about seasoning, bro. They don't. I'm, they I'm, don't, not big, they don't. I'm not a big sauce guy. What's your favorite seasoning? Oh, man. I don't know. I don't Come really on, have man. a favorite seasoning though. What do you throw like what if you if you can't put sauce on chicken wings, which sauce doesn't really, in my opinion, belong on chicken wings. I like dry rub. Like yeah. where you on lemon pepper, you like Lowry's. Lowry's. I like, I'll probably say Lowry's, man. Okay. Yeah, I'll probably have to say Lowry's. What's the worst sauce pitch you've gotten? The worst business pitch you've gotten since you've been in the league? Because I know people are coming to you left and right for like some sort of sauce endorsement. I don't know. You got a business guy for that. Yeah, I do. I do. Legend I do. That. I do for sure. But I, I don't know. They probably. Yeah. They. It, it was probably so bad. They probably didn't even tell me about didn't it. Didn't even like, bring it to you. You know what I'm saying? In 2022, Sauce endorsed a Buffalo Wild Wings sweet and spicy barbecue sauce known as Sauce Sauce. Nice, dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's creative. That's good shit. Yeah, man. I, I probably eat that. Every other day, every day, if not every other day. You know really? What I'm yeah. So you don't it's, eat like a professional athlete necessarily. Um, 
kind of, but I, I, I eat it in moderation. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Whether I just put a little bit on there and just have to make it last the whole the whole meal. Yeah. But I, I try to I try to eat healthy, man. It's hard, man. Is there any sauce honest, you hate? Hard. Where do we stand on mayonnaise? I grew up eating mayonnaise. Ugh. I, I grew up eating. That's how I used to put the mayonnaise on the bread. That's what I used to use for my for my sandwiches. Yeah. Okay. You know what I'm saying? A I don't know leavened, if there's any like sauce that I that I that I hate. Okay. All right. No sauces that he hates. Did you did you hate hard knocks? How'd you feel about hard knocks? We were just talking about hard knocks with uh with uh, Ulbrich. Like, what was that like having people in the building all the time? You didn't really have a to, to, like if you're young, I feel like you you don't know any different, so yeah. it's all crazy and new. But for me, thinking about hard knocks would be nuts. Um, man, I wish things were able to be different. You know, obviously throughout the season. Yeah. Because if I was to, if things was to be different last year, my thought process on the beginning, and this is what I was telling like the team, like. They're literally about to record us do something special every day. Like they're about to record our process of doing something special, and that's the way I thought about it. Because <clears throat> especially when it's something like that that you no longer have control over, it's like you have to find the positive things throughout that process. And I literally started believing in that process. Like they're about to record our our preparation of a special run. You know? Yeah. I got two for you, and then we'll let you go, man. Um, first off, when I, I I heard this Malachi kid that you guys drafted, the Poorly. wide receiver, yeah, I heard Debo Samuel, and I'm like, all right, uh, that'll work. Well, yeah, that'll work. What What do you think so far? Uh, he's looking good. You know, every single OTAs, he's there. You know, um, obviously, he's attacking our weight room. Um, I'm not too big on comparisons, though. You know what I'm saying, like. Just like how people compare me to Revis, and it's like, first of all, we got two total different body types. So I don't know if y'all can prepare, compare us that way. Obviously, he's a dog. I'm a dog, too. But it's like, it's Revis we talking about. You know, the amount of things, the spe uh, special things he, he he's done is, is crazy. I'm only going on year three in the league, you know, so it's, it's totally different. I have to become the best sauce gardener that I can be, you know? And then when it comes to Malachi, like, it's Debo. Debo, he's done some crazy things in, in, in the league as well. You know, um, he's a dog. You know, he can run routes. He can get the. He can go to running back. He can get the ball now and do something special with it. You know, and Malachi, he just got in the league. So it's one of those things, like, you just have to see it first, you know? That's just like me. When I first got here, yeah, I'm sauce. They drafted me. I got the sauce bottle when I got drafted. But guys like C.J. Mosey, they don't care about none of that. They don't care about all of the extra stuff that's going on. They want to see me play. They want to see me play in a real NFL game. They want to see me go through an NFL training camp, and they want to see what I can do. You know, so all the comparisons, uh, I'm, not a, I'm not a huge fan of it. Well, I mean – if he's big and he's physical, I can't wait to watch him play. Week one. Yeah, week one yeah. against the Niners. Debo yeah. versus the guy they're trying to compare to yeah. Debo. Um, yeah. Last question for you. This came out, NFLPA, talking about changing the schedule. I know how I feel. I've been through two a days. I, a couple CBAs ago where tr training camp was, was really long. Um, but they're talking about now possibly doing away with voluntary and then putting training camp somewhere in June or early July. What do you think first when, when you think about your – your year as a player. Hold um, on, say say that one. I'm, I'm gonna be honest. I don't really be in the loop. That's good. So this is perfect. We're breaking news I, for Sauce. I don't know nothing about schedule change. I don't know anything about. So so. Well, here I we just go. found out about the kickoff drill yesterday. I heard about you it. You found out about the kickoff <laughs> on, <laughs> drill on Twitter. Yeah, we was in a team meeting. Kosala put a uh, a video of somebody doing. It. I'm like, bro, what is this? Like, <laughs> Like, the guys on the line didn't move into the ball, either hit the ground or the returner caught. I'm like, bro, this is this is different. This is Did really you like different. the Eagle meeting? Which one? Eagles and Crows? Eagles and Crows? If you're an Eagle, uh, you're up at the right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, 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 cool. we love that. We love we were, yeah. I like Salah. We, we were digging that. <laughs> Most All right, so, so the deal is they're going to tell you possibly, what if I told you, Sauce, when you finish in February, because you're going to the Super Bowl, when you finish in February, you're not going to have to come back until 
say June 20th for camp, but, but camp is June 20th and it's going to go through, you know, the next February, next February. How do you feel about that? Or would you rather have voluntary and get everybody together and then come back in July as you do now? They're Man. not going to decide um, based on your, you know. No, nah, yeah, decide. yeah, I know. So you said, <laughs> you said either have camp, either have camp when? June? Like, let's say June 20th, you got a report. So it's early. But you don't have voluntary, or you could have normal camp start with voluntary in April. Mm, I'm not guilty, Sam. Mm-hmm. So it'll be no OTAs. Basically. Well, me personally. See, I don't want to. I don't want to ruin the fun for the guys who who like train away from the facility. But I'm gonna just speak for me. If you see this and uh, you have to decide, and I'm the last person, even though I don't think that's gonna be it, don't listen to me. Me, I personally train at the Jets facility like throughout the whole year, year round. So it's like yeah, I'm, gonna, every, I'm gonna be there here. anyways. Yeah, I'm going to be here. I'm going to utilize the resources. And, like, these are the people who know what I have to get better at every year. So, like, I'd rather train at the Jets facility and then going somewhere else, doing what somebody else do with the other cornerbacks. That's not the technique that's taught here. That's yeah. what I would do. So, yeah. if it's some voluntary, I'll be there. Dude, I, I kind of feel like a lot of guys are going to say, hey, I don't want to go to camp in mid-June. Like, I got a family or I got my routine. I like to train in the summer. Yeah. You know, I like to get away from wherever I play. I, I think actually you and I's opinion is probably going to be more popular. Because I asked Derek <laughs> yeah. Carr yesterday. He felt the same way. Because OTAs, you come together. Right. If you don't come together after the season, it's hard to build the culture. It's hard to build your team. The brotherhood. The brotherhood, man. The hanging out, mm-hmm. bro. And and then also, like, if, you, if you're a good team, how are you going to repeat? How are you going right. to keep it at that level? If you, you build all this momentum and then you go away for six months. It might be, I feel like it might be egos. Yeah. Like, not being able to build that brotherhood. Everybody just come in and this camp. I feel like a lot of egos can, uh, we don't have that problem here, but like no. gen- generically speaking, especially you got guys who win a Super Bowl yeah. and they don't have to come back. I just feel like it'd be easy for teams to go from up here all the way down here, you know, just for you. the, just for like one small thing like that. It's really a big thing. So that's, I agree with you. that's how I feel. All right, well, I, hey, I appreciate the time. Went a little bit over sauce. Really appreciate it, dude, and uh, good luck this year. Enjoy watching I appreciate play, it, man. man. Yep. Yeah. Appreciate Tell it. Joe, Big fan Tell of Joe you, what's man. Up. Oh, thank you, yep. dude. Appreciate you it. Know Did it. you play with Vinny a little bit, Curry? Cur- yep, yep, yep. That's a couple that's years ago. Guy. You still talk to him a little bit? Uh, Decent amount. Yeah, decent he's got that, that golf tournament I might get up to. So I might see you around, but uh, good luck this year, man. Okay, appreciate okay, that, bro. Man. Thank you yeah. all for having me.